again, this is Christy Arkovich in Tampa, Florida. Um, we practice student loans, bankruptcies, um, elder law, things like that. And we have with us uh, Melissa Sovilla at uh, Carey um, Leisure and Neal. <laughs> I, I always refer to your firm as Patrick Carey's firm because I know that he was the original founder, I, I think, but then you've had other partner attorneys that have came on, came on board over the years. So Tom Carey was our original founder. Um, and his wife was killed by a drunk driver. Um, and so he really has committed his career to advocating for DUI victims. So Tom Carey started the firm and then um, he's brought in additional partners as time has gone by, but he's been our, our steady, steady gotcha. hand. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, one of the things that um, we run across a lot um, with our clients is they're being asked or they were asked to co-sign a debt. And so we inevitably deal with the problems that happens after a co-signing occurs. So when my nephews kind of were, you know, get, going through high school and college and so forth, and, and I wanted to, um, and, and I always refer to my nephews because I don't have my own kids. We just rent them. It works out really, really well. <laughs> That's a brilliant, brilliant. You're not responsible for their student loans. I mean, it's really exactly, brilliant. Exactly. Although you'd be surprised. Quite brilliant. We run into people who are aunts and uncles that do sign on student loans. And there is a bankruptcy rule where we, where we can discharge that if someone were willing to file a bankruptcy. But sometimes that's not a possibility. Yeah, it's something we don't really, uh, not really is uh, talked about a lot out there. Um, but I encouraged um, our nephews to never co-sign a debt. You know, if someone ever asked them to co-sign a debt, um, that links you for life with that person. And it could be a friend. It could be someone that you're married to and maybe you're not married to forever. I mean, there's things that happen throughout life. And so I always encourage them instead of co-signing, uh, give them a sum of money. You know, it, it won't be a huge amount, but it'll be enough for a down payment. Right. And then maybe that creditor would waive the requirement for a co-signer and would let them get whatever it was that they're, they're purchasing. And then that loan that you make, you know, have a signed promissory note. So that they're returning the money to you. But if they don't, be prepared to consider it as a gift. You know, it is what it is. It was someone who needed money at that time. And, and then you're not connected for life. And it hurts both parties, actually, because when you have a co-signing event, the person who's doing the co-signing is adding themselves 100% liability. And so I run into co-signers all the time that say, well, it wasn't my loan. Yes, it was. You co-signed. It's your loan as much as it is their loan. And that's a misunderstanding. Um, so that you have to pay that back. The second thing is, is um, you know, you may get married in the future. Well, your future spouse didn't agree to that co-signing arrangement that you have with whoever they don't even know. Okay, that's a problem. And then the co-signer, let's say that they want to come and they want to settle the debt. Well, I've got this, you know, tagged on person out there that might be a, a parent or an aunt or an uncle or something, and they've got money. And so now I represent this person with financial problems. Maybe they have an undue hardship, but I can't help them. I can't do anything about getting rid of that debt because I've got this party on the other side that you know, has financial uh, wherewithal to pay the debt. And so it hurts them in trying to settle it. So there's bad news all the way around with co-signing. What have you run across on those kind of things? Well, I have run across, even personally in my family, I have um, a family member who's very financially responsible um, and they uh, have been, had a friend who um, wasn't as financially responsible, was hit up to co-sign on an auto loan, um, went ahead and agreed to it. Then that friend defaulted on the loan and, you know, they came to me, oh, what am I going to do? They're defaulting. It's affecting my credit. That's and it. unfortunately, the harsh reality is you took on that responsibility and you shouldn't have done that. Um, so, you know, we we definitely I would never encourage someone to co-sign on someone else's loan. You know, no matter how strong the relationship is or how desperate the need is, just like you said, a financial gift is better than co-signing and exposing your financial security long term. Yes, yes. And, and it can start out as a loan, but just know that it could be a gift and you'd be okay with that. So make sure it's an amount that you're comfortable with. Um, loaning money to family and friends, you know, often is problematic. So it's not something that we're necessarily suggesting, but it's far better than a co-signing situation. What's the saying that don't loan money that you're never prepared to, 
uh, you're never prepared to walk away from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think they say the same thing about uh, investing in cryptocurrency nowadays. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Are there any other uh, contractual type things that you've run across that um, you would like to share some tips to avoid problems? Well, sometimes we have, um, say, young adults who maybe a boyfriend and girlfriend decided to um, get an auto insurance policy together. Maybe they were living together in college or um, decided to add, um, girlfriend decides to add boyfriend onto her auto insurance policy. And then all of a sudden, girlfriend stops paying, the, you know, they separate or they split up sure. or maybe they don't even split up. And one of them stops paying the auto insurance premium it's not a defense that I didn't realize my boyfriend didn't pay the policy. I didn't realize that my girlfriend didn't pay the policy or intentionally didn't pay the policy. So that's not a defense. So be careful when um, you're doing joint auto insurance policies, Um, you're ultimately responsible for whether you have insurance or not. You know, it's not an excuse that you, your co-signer or your co-insurer didn't pay the policy. Sure, sure. Um, One other thing I just thought of, uh, we had a case this year and it dealt with the power of attorney designation. And so you may have someone where you're taking someone to a hospital or, or some kind of care facility of some sort. It's always important to add the POA at the end of your signature. Uh, we ran across that with um, a daughter who had uh, gotten some home health uh, care for her grandfather or father, one of the two, I think it was grandfather. And she knew to put POA at the end of her signature. And that means power of attorney. And that means that you're basically signing on behalf of the person. um, You're not actually uh, liable for that care, but you're just uh, signing on behalf of them. And so she knew to write power of attorney. But the line itself said on the bottom, legal, rep- you know, legal representative of client or something like that. And, and she gave the power of attorney to the care facility, uh, it's home health care. And they said, oh, we don't need that. You know, the, the line, it says guardian or legal representative or something like that. So we've already prepared for that. Well, lo and behold, you know, whatever it was, the grandfather couldn't pay for the care. And they came after and sued our client for individually for nearly 30 to $50,000 of care. And so we ended up, you know, using some consumer law type violations and some other issues. And we did actually get rid of it, but it took some doing. And so it was a very risky thing for our client to do to not write POA. So nowadays, if you're ever in a situation where, you know, particularly with COVID and you're dropping people off at different things, you know, make sure never to sign anything without putting a POA on the back of your uh, signature if you have a power of attorney. And if you don't have a power attorney, then don't sign it at all. <laughs> That's a great tip. And you don't have to be a young person to find that one handy. So yeah. And I just use that tip. That was just top of mind just because we were just wrapping up a case for that. And so I just thought I would mention that real quick. Um, okay. So, uh, well, I'd like to thank you today, uh, Melissa, for your time and trying to um, help our young adult clients um, get up to speed on some of the things that we've learned throughout the years usually um, the bad way, <laughs> you know, it, it's better to maybe get a clue up front as to how to avoid those, um, those things. So thank you for your time. And I really appreciate it.